Hi and welcome to my brand new YouTube series Ask Jimmy. This is where you the subscriber can ask me anything about photography or Photoshop and I'll see if I can answer that question for you. If you want to submit your questions you can see the email address to send that to popping up on the screen right now or in the description of this video below. I think we can all agree right now there's a lot of negative stuff going on in the world. I'm just going to bypass all that. I'm not going to mention the C word. I'm just going to get on with this tutorial and give you something to distract yourself with. Now if you want to take part in my other series, it's called Challenge Jimmy. And this is where you can send me your raw files and I process them. Now I want to make one new request for that series. I'd love it if you could send me your best raw files. So what you consider to be your best image. And I'll process them and you can see how I would do it differently to you. And obviously my version might be much worse than yours. It might be better. Who knows? But you might learn something new. So if you've got some great raw files you want to share with me, then please send it to this email address. And again, you'll see that email address in the description of the video. So thank you to Mark Rodwell who asked me this question. Basically, it was a very open question. And he just asked, in terms of post-processing, what is my number one tip? Now I'm going to go straight past exposure blending because clearly that's my thing and that's what I like to do. And if you've been watching my videos, you'll already know that. But there is something that I really encourage every photographer to do. And that's balance the light in your scene. Now I've just created a new course called Jimmy's Big Five. And in every single one of those videos, I show you how to shift the light in your image to the area you want your viewer to look at. And we do that by crafting our own vignettes. And it's a really simple process, but it's surprising how many photographers don't do it. So often when we think about vignettes, we'll have an image like this. And let's say we'll go to filter, camera raw filter, and we can use the automated vignette option in lens correction. So we can bring the vignette all the way down to minus 100, make the corners really dark, and then just press OK. And in that sense, the vignette is kind of an afterthought. We're just throwing in some darkened borders. But a vignette serves a really important function. The fact is, in our scenes, most of the things aren't worth our viewers' attention. So the sky is quite interesting in this image, and so is the reflection. But you don't really want the viewer to pay attention immediately to the finer details in the sky or in the water, or even in the buildings. All those things add to the overall mood. So essentially, you want to remove those areas from your viewer's immediate perspective and push them towards the most interesting parts of your photo. And that serves a couple of functions. Firstly, when you've got a scene with lots going on, it's easier for the viewer to digest mentally if we focus them on one point at first. Then, of course, their eyes can settle on different parts of the image afterwards. But a vignette also deepens mood. Because, in my opinion, slightly darker images carry a heavier mood than ones that are super bright. So, I'm going to show you some of the examples of how I craft a vignette. And these are examples taken straight from my new course. And at the very end, I'm going to show you how I can do that from scratch with one of your images. So, to begin with, this is the Milford Sound photo. And here, I have a group down the right called Vignette. So, before I created the vignette, we have a more open scene where the areas in the sky up here are bright and even the water a little bit brighter and we're taking away from where we want our viewers to look at, which is this mountain range here. But by creating the vignette, watch the shift here. It's subtle, so I hope you can see it on the video, but it makes a massive difference. Here's before and there's after. You see the way we're pushing the viewer towards the mountain and those rays of sun coming through the mountain here because that's the most interesting part of this image. We don't want to push them to this left mountain here. We don't want to push them up to the sky in the top left or to the mountain on the right. The most important part of the image is right in front of us right here. And so I created a vignette which basically I'll show you the mask I created. So this is a bright curves layer. I just brightened up the mid-tones and I painted it in manually in that mountainous area. And this is the darker part of the vignette. So these are the shadows that I created in the vignette. And you'll see they darken the sky. So again, there's before and after. See, very subtle, but very important. In the next image of Antelope Canyon, 
Here's our vignette layer. And once more, this is what the image looked like before. You'll see we've got brighter areas down the bottom right here and along this large part of the canyon. But we want to force the viewers towards these bright sun rays here. And especially this guy floating in the sand, this ghost. So this is after, before and after. That's a massive difference. We're telling the viewer as soon as they look at the image, look at these sun rays. Don't look at here in the top left or in the top right. Let your eyes fall on those areas later on. But first of all, look right into the center of the image. Now we have another landscape from Guilin, and this is our vignette here. So we have a really bright scene, which still works in my opinion, but the vignette really adds some mood and it pushes the viewer towards the sun and this silhouetted mountain range. And one thing that I've added there is if we look at this mountain range again, I've actually dodged with color. So I have brightened up the sun. Watch this before and after, before and after. And I can show you how to do that later. Another example again from Motokaiki in New Zealand. Here's before. So our brightness is pretty much universal throughout this image. But then after, see we're shifting the emphasis in our photo. And again, I burnt with color in this mountain area here. So there's before and after. And I also dodged the side of this rock here as well, just to push the viewer towards that area. So let's see the before and after in those places. So here's before and after in this area here. See, watch the color change. It's very subtle, but it does make a difference. I'm just adding some warmth there. And then the area of the sun before and after. Again, subtle, but it all makes a big difference. And finally, the last shot. This is the astro shot of Nugget Point. And this is very subtle too. And in fact, my main focal point is gonna be this path in the foreground. Because despite the fact that we have a beautiful Milky Way up here, that's actually the interesting subject in my opinion, because it's a very unique foreground for an astro shot. So that's where I push the viewer, before and after. See, I take away some of the emphasis of the sky in the corners, so left and right. When I create the vignette, it's darker in those areas and brighter in the path. So how do you do this in your photos? So this is Joe's photo here, and if you wanna follow Joe, you can see his Instagram profile under beans on toast. And now we've got a single exposure to work with. There's some overexposed areas there in the background, nothing too substantial. We can easily control those with the highlight slider. And I would say we need to bring the exposure up slightly of this photo, but not too much. Now I always clean my raw file. So I go to lens corrections, remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections. And then I'm not gonna open this as a smart object. I'm just gonna open the image. Now, even though I'm gonna show you how to create a vignette here, why don't we do a few other things just to have a bit of fun and perhaps you'll learn some new stuff. Now, first things first, it looks like this might've been shot in autumn, but we don't have those autumn colors in the tree here. So why don't we put some artificial colors in there? And I'll do that with the hue saturation layer. I'll select this hand here and I'll click on the green. Now you wanna move these arrows all the way along so that it encompasses most of the greens. You don't really wanna affect the reds or the oranges. When that's done, we can take the hue slider at the top and move it left or right. Obviously we don't get purple trees. So I'm gonna keep going until I think the trees look relatively autumny. Then I'll add a little bit of saturation because it's not much color and I think that looks okay. Now I'm gonna take my paintbrush, make sure the mask is selected. And I've got 100% opacity with a black foreground and I'm gonna paint out the grass because the grass shouldn't change color. Now with a smaller brush, just for some more precise changes, I'm gonna go up here and down there. So there we go, before and after. It just adds a nice little dimension to the photo. Now I'm gonna open up a vibrance layer and just add a tiny bit of vibrance. And this adds more color to the less saturated parts of your image. So you can be a bit more liberal with that before and after. 
and we can also add a vignette. Now this isn't something that I do much nowadays with my photos. I think it really is a matter of taste when it comes to the autumn effect. But there are a lot of people who still like it, so I'm going to show you how I do it. Now in order to create this merged layer, I hold down Alt, Control, Shift and E, or Option, Command, Shift and E on a Mac, and then go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I can make it relatively strong, let's say 26, and then bring the opacity of that layer all the way down. Now usually I would have stopped at around 12%. And all that does is create a really soft, dreamy effect. If you do it too strong, it looks like a kind of cheesy photo from the 80s. So you've got to be soft with how you do that. Then if you want to add some brightness to that Orton effect, you can hold down Control and L or Command and L and create a levels layer. And you can increase the brightness of that layer. So there you go. Although I think at 15% opacity, that probably didn't make a huge difference. So I think it's safe to say the subject in our image is the guy here walking along. It isn't the trees, it's not the ground, and it isn't the path. And it certainly isn't the gravestones. So with our vignette, we want to put our emphasis on this guy without overexposing the area behind him. But we don't want to underexpose some of these other areas. So the first thing I would do is create a curves layer. I would grab the upper midtones really deepen it. Now what I'm looking at here is the darker parts of the image. So top left in the tree, for example, keeping an eye on that area and I'm trying to make sure that it's not underexposed. Now with the bottom left part of this curves layer, I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And you see what happened there? The shadows softened. Essentially we softened our black point. So I can bring that up to about here. And I'm trying to avoid any harsh blacks because really harsh shadows will be more distracting than strong highlights. So I think we've pretty much got what we need now. Then I press command and I or control and I with the mask selected and you'll see we invert that mask and I choose a white paintbrush or you can press this button here just above the foreground color. Make it a big paintbrush and I'm going to paint around the trees. Now I think this is probably a little bit strong, maybe even some in the path here. I think it's a touch dark so I can reduce the opacity of that darker layer. Now that's great, we've got a dark vignette around our image but we're still not bringing attention to this guy here. So what I'd often do is just press Command and J or Control and J and you see that duplicates that darker layer. But then I press Command and I or Control and I. That inverts the mask. Then I double click on the curves icon again and I bring up those midtones and I can bring down that black point. So I'm just brightening up that area. So here's the before and after comparison. You'll see in the area around the tree here up here, it's a little bit strong and distracting, and in this gravestone and maybe on the path. So with the mask selected and a black foreground, and a small brush, we're going to paint out that brightened layer in those areas. Small brush, just to miss this guy. There we go. So there's before and after. And if we group these two layers, Command and G, before and after. Now I still don't think we've done a fantastic job, so why don't I show you how we can reinforce that vignette. And this is the same technique I used before when I was dodging and burning with colour in the images that I just showed you. And all we need to do for that is to create a brand new layer, set the blend mode of that layer to soft light, have a foreground of black, create a larger brush, and we can manually paint in the vignette, so the darker area. See how we're painting out this area? Now we can also set a blend mode of overlay, which might work better here, but you see that 
offers a little bit of contrast in the foreground, or we can choose a blend mode of normal. Now I've just realized I haven't got a foreground which is black, it's actually gray, so I've changed it to black, and there we are, I'm painting in this side area, and I can reduce the opacity of that layer quite a lot. So there's before and after. Maybe a little bit more, so around 20%. So we're taking emphasis away from the grass here. And to brighten up the guy, we can again create a brand new layer with a white foreground and our blend mode. This time we will go for soft light. And I'm just gonna press once over this guy. And then I'm gonna bring the opacity right down to around, let's say 20%. I'm trying to make sure that the guy is nicely highlighted. And so, if we close this group, we can see before and after. Before and after. You see, that's a massive difference. Before, when the viewer looks at the image, the first thing they see is the color in the trees, which isn't really a bad thing, in fairness. But if the subject is the man, all we see is this kind of silhouetted guy. But with the vignette added, the viewer immediately is pulled towards this man then maybe the path, and then maybe the trees above. So you see how we are shifting our viewers' attention to the areas that we want them to notice first. And just so we can see a before and after of that photo, that's before we did any processing, and that's after. And like most of my images, I like to finish with a contrast adjustment just to make sure it's not too dark. So in this instance, I'll probably bring up the mid-tones a tiny bit. So there's before and after, that's probably a little bit too strong. That's a little bit better. So, one last time, I'm gonna group all these, that's before processing, and that's after processing. And that's it for the first Ask Jimmy. And if you'd like to take part in this series, by all means, send me your questions to the email address in the description of this video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.